Hello, everybody. My name is David Rose. I'm with AWS. I'm a Principal Partner Development Specialist in Financial Services. Welcome to uh, This Is My Offer. This is a uh, series of web, web episodes where we highlight the innovative solutions of uh, some of our kind of our premier partners. And today I'm joined by Subir Graywall with Ness. Uh, Subir, maybe you could uh, introduce yourself and then we'll uh, turn to Ness. Thanks, David. Great to be here with you. Um, Sabir Graywall here. I lead the AWS practice at Ness. Uh, Ness is a professional services uh, firm that works with our clients on digital transformations. Mm -hmm. um, we are 4,500 people spread across three geographies, uh, Asia, Europe, and North America, roughly equal in size. Uh, and I lead a team that focuses on cloud and AWS technologies in particular. And hopefully we'll talk about um, a couple of the client engagements that we've uh, we've done today uh, on okay. this side. Great, thank you for that, uh, that intro. Now, I know the solution that we're going to talk about today is risk on cloud with streaming, um, which has been very, very uh, well received and innovative within the capital markets segment. Uh, maybe you can expand on that a little bit, kind of what, what the background of that was, what the value prop is. Uh, it's a, a super interesting solution. Sure. Thanks, David. Um, so one of our industry verticals uh, that Ness operates in is in financial services. Um, and that's closely aligned with my background as well. I've worked within um, the risk management kind of trading space within capital mm -hmm. markets for much of my career. And um, we have a specialist team that works with firms within that uh, segment, be they large asset managers, broker dealers, uh, some of the largest hedge funds uh, in the world. And we've, we've had people who've operated in that space for a very long time. Um, so I started my journey in 99. Some of my colleagues uh, have, have even more experience in the industry. And over the course of that, uh, over the course of our careers, we've seen several different types of solutions for the same problem. And the problem that large asset managers and trading firms have is uh, that when they operate in certain markets, they're transacting a lot of different derivatives products mm. and they need a view of risk or sensitivity um, or stress measures um, sometimes to evaluate uh, what might happen to this portfolio if the market moves. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a heavy computational task. It involves a lot of data, collecting data from um, the product level to market data, et cetera, mm -hmm. and then bringing it all together. And some of the calculations themselves can be quite complex because the instruments themselves are complex. Right. Uh, right. And then there's an aggregation component as well. Mm -hmm. So, so pulling data from a lot of different kind of disparate sources, either exactly. you know, trades or market data, reference data, you know, all the uh, all the all the big streams there. Exactly. And historically, uh, the solution that most organizations had was to collect all of this, put it in a database, mm. and then pick it up at the end of the night and run a batch process yep. to produce a series of reports. And maybe there was some intraday updates that you could do, you know, specific risk measures or dimensions that you might want to recalculate. Um, increasingly, these systems are at the, at the point where they don't serve their original purpose mm -hmm. particularly well yeah. um, because markets have moved much higher volume today. A desire for intraday sensitivity analysis um, regulators are asking that risk metrics be more um, elaborate or analyze portfolios at a deeper level. So this might be, you know, you were running, uh, you know, three or four scenarios. We want to run mm -hmm. 15 different scenarios. We want to mm -hmm. stress out at, you know, three sigma mm -hmm. level. Um, so the systems that are in place uh, often on premises or mm -hmm. usually on premises um, cannot handle these workloads in a timely fashion. So we 
we've spoken to clients where you know the nightly batch run runs for hours and hours and mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. isn't ready for start of day trading which means their businesses are then operating on stale data and fast moving markets that's a real problem yeah. Yeah. um so where what we turned to uh as we confronted this th this situation or this particular problem with multiple clients is we turned the problem on its head. We said, rather than trying to collect all this data and get it ready at, mm -hmm. at the end of the day and then start running, why don't we use the data in motion event-driven paradigm? And as events come in, as data is ready, um, or as users ask for updated reporting on a particular segment of the portfolio, we'll go ahead and run calculations. Now, this requires a completely different type of infrastructure. You can't do it on premises because you need to be able to scale up and down, a lot of variability. So cloud was perfect for it. And um, relational databases are not the ideal place to keep this sort of event-driven processing. Mm -hmm. So we move to other technologies like Kafka and mm -hmm. Flink. Um, okay. And they operate in in a way that's much more aligned with this data in motion event driven concept mm -hmm. and allow mm -hmm. us to run these huge parallel computational tasks uh, and pump through much larger amounts of data um, generally on running on commodity hardware so it's not particularly okay. expensive from an infrastructure level um, mm -hmm. what you're doing is spreading that workload um, across um different machines exactly what yeah. the computing is supposed to be yeah that's super interesting you mentioned relational databases and whether there's a fit for them here are you suggesting that we kind of give up on them altogether or is this uh, the right uh the right architecture kind of a combination that would involve streaming plus relational databases that's a great question and um here's my answer to it in the past that tended to be the the tool that we had mm -hmm. so you know when all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail yeah. and it, to an extent that is what seemed to happen in a lot of organizations uh in a lot of technology organizations so a lot of a lot of things got put into relational databases that perhaps weren't suited for for that form right. of data storage or retrieval so you would have people putting documents in there uh you'd have people using things like triggers to create something yeah. like an event driven architecture mm -hmm. but the systems weren't really designed to do that and at their core it's a single point now uh, a, a single store of data that's considered a master sure. Yeah. You can do some things with replication, and I've worked with replication over most of my career, seen some very interesting solutions in that area. Um, so I'm not saying we're going to get rid of relational mm -hmm. databases. Mm -hmm. Where we are today is that we uh, is a point where we have different tools within the technology world that are suitable for different purposes. And mm -hmm. what we're saying is let's use relational databases for what they're good at. Mm -hmm. And let's use uh, stream computing technologies for what they're really good at. Let's use document databases for what they're good at. Let's use object stores for what they're good at. Um, and if we do that, then we end up with a more resilient, more scalable architecture overall. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I think yeah. relational databases are here. Yeah, so they're still they're still really yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned the architecture. Uh, is that something you could maybe share a little bit more detail, kind of what that looks like, um, so everybody can get a better feeling for it? Absolutely. So I've got up here on my screen, uh, hopefully you can see it. This is our offer for Risk on Cloud with Streaming uh, on the AWS Marketplace. And um, it's it gives you a written description of what I've been uh, mm -hmm. what I've been talking about today. Um, and what a discovery engagement might look like. And here on the right-hand side for our viewers who are interested, uh, you can click on this, uh, this link and it opens up a uh, architecture diagram. Um, and it describes our approach to these modernization programs. And these modernization programs can take 
uh, are not to be undertaken lightly. Because what we're doing is, uh, in a sense, open heart surgery on the core of the business process for many of the organizations uh, oh, yeah. we're working with here. Um, and what we've found is you have to get some early wins um, and you have to start working with the data as quickly as you can. Right. So on the left hand side, you can see the customer data center. That's usually where we start. And there are various data sources here. There might be market data on some sort of uh, messaging bus. Mm -hmm. um, there might be product master, maybe sitting in Hadoop, relational database sources for a lot of other things. What we try to do is get as much of that onto Kafka as possible. In this case, um, you know, we've shown Confluent, but even MSK we've used as well in several other, uh, in several cases. Um, once we have that data on Kafka, that opens up several different possibilities for us. We get that onto the cloud. So now we can work independently of the systems that are on premises. We're not impacting the day-to-day -day processing. And we start building feature sets and microservices on top of this data. So we've got the data in motion now. It's not okay. locked away in a database. It's on the stream. It's coming in as it's being produced, typically via change data capture if, if the source mm -hmm. is a database. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the platform, kind of in the middle, you can see the core computational engine. In this case, we are uh, representing that or running our services on Flink um, and uh, the Amazon uh, implementation of Flink is uh, uh, Kinesis Data Analytics. So that's mm -hmm. the map. In these platforms, Spark is another option that might be more appropriate if you're not looking for really low latency. Flink is a low latency solution. Okay. Um, but the kinds of operations that our clients might perform here are algorithmic trading, you know, valuation runs, bootstrapping curves, mm. for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is an important calc that sometimes takes uh, quite a long time. A data enrichment can also be done here. And then on the right-hand side, you've got an aggregation layer. And what we're doing here is we're taking the results that we've produced which might be, um, you know, in a particular dimension, pulling them together, slicing and dicing them, bucketing them by positions yeah. or buckets, and then displaying them. And there's several tools uh, on AWS that we've found are very useful um, to do this work, uh, including Athena, um, QuickSight, yeah. and there's some other options here as well. Okay. So this is a full-fledged solution from data. Yeah creation to mm -hmm. uh, to aggregation and uh, yeah no, that, that's that is great um yeah that, that's super helpful uh you know I, we don't have tons of time but i'd love to hear maybe you know one example of a client you know, use case client success story that would help our uh, uh viewers you know conceptualize uh, the solution absolutely um it's so I think I'm going to pick um, the OCC, the Options Clearing Corp. And I think most uh, of the viewers here will know who the Option Clearing Corp is. They're the largest clearing firm in the world. Um, virtually all um, US traded options clear through the OCC. So it's an enormous book, millions of open positions, um, hundreds of clearing member firms. And the OCC sits at the center as uh, the bilateral counterparty uh, in between two, uh, two entities that might have tr traded on opposite sides of the, of sure. the instrument. Uh, and so the OCC is tasked with maintaining orderly markets. Uh, and part of, that on, uh, part of that task, when you're dealing with derivative instruments and derivative instruments that can vary widely in value, depending on market conditions, mm -hmm. um, is calculating the present value and presenting that uh, for margining purposes. Yeah. Uh, so that you can see exactly what every clearing member's position is at any given time 
uh, netting across all of their positions mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. arrive at a number that you know they need to put up for collateral or margin. Um, the OCC has run this process uh, in batch-driven mode again because it was built in an earlier era. Mm -hmm. um, and it has been running for years and years and years. It's a behemoth. Uh, and that's what a lot of these systems. Yeah. They, they've kind of grown over time through kind of add-ons, bolt-ons, things for that nature. Yeah. And once you have something working, it's such an enormous effort to get this approved by regulators. Yeah. Get your quantitative analysts to approve the calculations. That you really, it, this isn't the kind of system you can switch, you know, the spur mm -hmm. of the moment. Um, testing on our on our um, project alone uh, has taken months and months and, and years and in, um, for certain things. So that and that's understood going into uh, going into an endeavor like this. So what we've done at the OCC is built a new platform on Kafka and Flink. Uh, and that allows the OCC to run intraday runs, so they're not uh, beholden to the end of day batch. Yeah. Uh, that allows them to calculate intraday margin, update it if markets are moving very fast. Um, you can uh, you can calculate margin requirements uh, with present data rather than wait for an overnight run close of day data. Um, and the this new system is is far better at supporting the volumes that they're seeing today. Um, and that's really the solution that the OCC needs um, for this next phase of market evolution uh, with the number or, or the volume of trading that we're seeing, uh, a lot more fragmented marketplace, a lot of different players. Um, and for them as well, you know, global expansion, a lot more global interest in, in, um, in Europe markets okay great that that's that's helpful now if people wanted to learn a little bit more i know that earlier you showed um uh, a, a few links what's the best way for uh, viewers to get some information on the on the rocks solution oh thank you for that um my business development colleagues are gonna are gonna <laughs> answer that, that question so yes they can uh, people can definitely go to the marketplace to the okay. aws marketplace search for nest and rocks rocs risk on cloud with streaming um and we have a microsite on um the nest website as well it's called rocks.nest.com okay um and they can also email us rocks at nest.com okay uh, to start a conversation, um, and uh, and yeah, we would love to have uh, have a chat with uh, with anybody who's considering a uh, a move towards data in motion, towards uh, stream computing for risk and valuation systems in capital markets. Great, uh, that's a uh, a great ending. So thank you so much, Sabir, for your time, and thank you uh, thanks to Ness as well. Um, Everybody check back every uh, every week or two weeks. We should have new partner uh, partner highlights that we'll go through. And we look forward to seeing everybody next time. Bye. Thanks all.